We can spend a lot of time talking about you know how to post on Twitter and the different details about using hashtags and at symbols and all that, but it really doesn't make any difference if we don't use Twitter well. So we're going to learn uh, the difference here about how to use Twitter effectively for our purposes as opposed to just putting up anything that we wish and waiting to see what happens. You know, a lot of the reason why uh, you will get a job in the future is because you are perceived by people my age, and you know those are the people doing hiring, as the experts in social media. I mean, you grew up with social media sites, and really that's what they're looking for, people like you who can use the tools of the trade that are being used now. Um, it makes you employable, but it also gives you a lot of responsibility. The biggest challenge is that there's still a lot of students out there, a lot of people your age, that don't recognize the power that comes behind Twitter and that this is, to people like me, a legitimate source of news or journalism. And if you don't treat it like one, then uh, it's an impression that you don't want to make. So when you tweet things that are inappropriate, remember that they have ramifications. And what you may think is appropriate, a future employer may not or a source may not. And if you, for example, threaten the president, the Secret Service will come looking for you, as they did to Alyssa Douglas when she sent the tweet that we have pictured it right. Um, there was also an Olympic athlete in 2012 who was sent home uh, by the Greek Olympic Committee because she tweeted things that they felt were inappropriate, and she did not get to compete in the Olympics because of her Twitter account. Every single thing that you tweet is public, and you have to make sure that you recognize that this is not like Facebook. So, you know, the privacy settings that you, that you are utilizing on Facebook do not exist in Twitter in the same way. Yes, you can make your Twitter account private, but that's not really useful to you since you want this to be a tool to promote yourself and your work. Also, if I scrape something off your Twitter account and retweet it, well, you know what? It just became public for you. Um, and you have to think into the future. Can this get me into trouble five or ten years from now? I beg you to think before you tweet. Think of every single thing you tweet as being public, everything you tweet as being a permanent record, and don't write anything that you don't want your professor, your editor, your mother to see. Um, here's an example at Wright that became a, a very famous tweet from the Red Cross. Ryan found two more four-packs of dogfish heads might as touch beer. When we drink, we do it right. Hashtag getting slizzard. Well, it turned out the person who updates the American Red Cross Twitter feed thought he was posting this on his private Twitter account and instead posted it on the public one. So remember, this is not a private messaging service between you and your friends. You want this account to be public. You want people to find you. You want there to be a clearly defined purpose for this account and that this represents you and your organization. And neatness and accuracy do count on Twitter. Here's another great quote. You have to be concise on Twitter. Like circumcision, everything extra gets cut off whether you like it or not. So don't type 180 characters and not worry about the 140 character limit. Uh, make sure that you are writing what you mean and meaning what you write, that you are furthering discussion in some meaningful way, that you're giving some small aspect of your personality, but it's one that you want everyone to see, and that you're adding value both to this online dialogue and to your online identity. You can give quite a bit of information, um, but recognize that if you tweet out new blog post or your headline is um, looking at school reform, it's not necessarily going to attract readers. So you have to make sure that you are writing something that other people will be compelled to click on or that other people will be compelled to retweet. All of these are, are your goal, this, this goal of interactivity and uh, connecting with this greater cyber world. So, you know, a lot of people are still tweeting, uh, this is what I had for lunch. Um, I've had a student in the past who tweeted rather nasty things about someone she was sitting next to in class. Um, you know, there's, uh, I, there, there's all kinds of, of ways that you can do this inappropriately. But stop and think about what's happening. You're going to tweet something. The goal is for other people to retweet it. So do you really want someone to retweet and retweet and retweet something that makes you sound or look less than what you wish to? And, you know, here's a list of that's been developed of the least retweetable words. So these are things that people put in all the time. Certainly, ha ha, LOL, go into the game or whatever. Nobody is going to retweet this. No one's going to, people are going to stop following you if these are the kind of tweets you send out. 
try not to hog the Twitter stream. So, you know, one of the things that, that we like to do in Twitter is to live tweet events, but it has to be an event that's worthwhile. Make sure that you let people know you're going to be sending a lot of tweets. I mean, if you're, you know, picking your little brother up at camp and you start tweeting, driving up to camp, uh, getting out of the car, um, boy, it's hot up here, uh, just saw a cardinal you know, why is that something that other people need to know? Basically, you're creating a running stream of dialogue, but most people don't want to listen to that, and they're certainly not going to be following you on Twitter if that's what you do. So it better be something worthwhile. You're live tweeting an event, a speech, um, you know, a presentation, something that's compelling that other people would be interested in. That's that's the perfect use for Twitter, but think ahead to what the, the reader is going to want. I try to write even tighter than 140 characters, and a lot of people on Twitter advocate this because I do want to be retweeted. So, you know, when you retweet, your name goes on it. So it's the RT, and then it would say at Nicole underscore craft. That's a lot of characters being taken up. And if my tweet was 140 characters, something's going to be cut in the retweet. So write as tight as you can. Allow for comments or hashtags to be added. Um, now, I said try to use AP style as much as possible. You can contract some things and, and certainly consolidate and step away from AP style to get keep the message uh, moving. Just make sure the message is clear. I always make sure to give credits for who you're retweeting and where you get your information. Um, as we mentioned before, you know, talking about the via and um, you know, including retweets from both sides so that you don't appear to be incredibly biased, um, especially if you're covering something. So say you cover Columbus schools, um, you know, you don't want to be tweeting out all the time the people who say positive things about Columbus schools or the people who say negative things. You want to make sure that you're on both sides. And you have to be responsive. So one of the things that we're going to work on in class is, is utilizing Hootsuite um, the, the best way that we can because we have to be able to see who's talking with us. Did someone tweet a message to you? You have to respond to that. And in Twitter, it's not quite as intuitive how to find those messages, so we're going to show that. But remember, when you're using Twitter, it is a conversation, not a broadcast.